Okay, in this video we are going to do a CMA. In the previous video, uh, comparative properties for picking comparative properties for a CMA we've already done. We have uh, at least three comps that we're going to use for this CMA. And we are in the MLS and I am going to click on the comprehensive CMA right here. Now in the previous video, uh, this was our subject property. We found out that it had uh, this 627 square feet is now finished in this house. And these are the three comps that we have chosen. And I have three different windows of the MLS opened up so I can toggle back and forth and get the information I need. Uh, I'm now in the CMA and uh, program, and I'm going to click on New. Okay, now this one over here is for cloning an existing MLS listing, and it must be your listing. It can't be somebody else's that's listed in there. So to me, this this is almost useless because you rarely would ever do a CMA of a property that you already have listed. Um, they really need to change this, in my opinion, so that you can because sometimes you may want to do a CMA for a buyer on a property that they may be wanting to purchase and they want to, they want to see a CMA on it and you can do one on somebody else's listing that way. But as of now, it will not let you do that. So we have to choose this uh, create new subject property and I'm going to hit next and then I just kind of fill in the information here is the information it's 18 Audrey Lane and I also printed that off so I could would not have to toggle back and forth so I can enter the information and just make sure that whenever you do a listing uh, or write an offer that you always include the, whether it's the lane, the avenue, the street, the circle, or whatever, because that can cause problems later on uh, in offers and when the title company gets it, you know, they have to further define that. So, uh, yeah, we're in the Tennessee. Uh, the zip code in Jonesboro is 37659. Uh, let's see. Actually put that in the wrong place, so I'm going to cut that out and paste it up here. It actually that's the street name, and the city is Jonesboro. And the area is Jonesboro, the ridges. And you can put the subdivision as Mockingbird Place. And really, a lot of this information doesn't matter. Uh, the more you put in here, the more that it fills in your CMA. We've already pulled the comps, and sometimes this information is used within this program to pull comps. But we've already pulled our comps ahead of time. To me, it was easier just to go through the MLS and do it than it is within this program. Um, so really, I don't have to fill out a lot of this information, but I'm going to, it looks like uh, there's 1.09 acres of land. Um, this is a three-bedroom, two-bath home. And it is a one-story home. Now one thing I do want to fill in is the, is the square footage in the property condition. The property condition is above average. Uh, finished level square, uh, on, on the first level, the finished square feet on this one is 1170. And the finished square feet in the basement is 627. And the total square footage is let's see what's 
I had to do my math in my on the screen here, so it's right at eighteen hundred square feet, seventeen ninety seven. And you definitely want to put the seller's name right here, so that when it makes out the CMA, it addresses it to the seller on the cover page. Um, if you forget to put the owner's name in, uh, you uh, you you can go back into the program and add it, but for some reason it will never add it to the finished product. So you really need to make sure that you get the seller's name uh, the right the first time. And it is Dennis and Elizabeth Earhart. That's who the owners of this is. Dennis and Elizabeth. Your heart. Your heart. And I want to make sure I spell that correctly because you definitely don't want to misspell a seller's name on a document that they'll be looking at. Okay. And I'm going to pick some of these things, but like I said, we've already picked our comp. It doesn't really matter much. We're dealing with a one-level ranch house. Okay. And I could put the year in there. Year built is 2001. Okay, so I have all that in there. And I'm going to hit save listing. And there is the information. All of that information will go on the cover sheet. Now at this point, it just kind of goes back to the very first, one of the, the first screens. And you just need to make sure you have it checked. Uh, you can add a photo right here, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, uh, but right now I'm just going to go ahead and complete the CMA and then at the end I'm going to come back and add a photo to it. So I'm going to hit, once this is checked up here, I'm going to go down here instead of hitting the new, now I'm going to hit the next. And right here is where you could let it pick comps based on some of these things, uh, but I already have pick my comps if you remember. Uh, this is the three and I'm only concentrating on these numbers right here to put in. And I'll put those in right now. Six four three eight one three seven eight zero three one. Three eight three one six two, and they're all separated by a comma. And so that's all we need. And you can do various things here, but I put the three comps in that I've previously chosen, and I'm hitting next. And even though I only put three comps in, the program still tried to come up with some other comps but I'm not interested in the ones it's chosen. I feel like that mine are accurate and they will be the first three. And uh, I hit next. And this is the, you know, you can add or take away documents that are gonna be in your CMA. Uh, you can, uh, for instance, the, the recommended price I could remove, but of course I want the recommended price in there. So every, all of these documents right here are going to be in my final CMA. And so I want to keep those in there. Uh, you may want to choose some of these other ones to spruce it up a little bit. 
I like to keep mine simple. And when I click on this build it right here, um, it will build the CMA. And this is the final CMA. There is a, I chose, this is the cover. And then this is like a cover letter. And then the table of contents. And then we start having the comparison of properties. Now notice that there's no picture here for the subject property. Uh, sometimes there won't be a picture, but I can show you how to get a picture uh, by going to Google Earth and uh, downloading a picture for this CMA. And here I like this map display. I, it, it shows in relation where the comps are. In fact, two of the comps are right here on top of the subject property. They're in the same neighborhood. And you would have to zoom out in order to see. And then there's one comp that's uh, further away. And there is the recommended price. It is taking um, it is taking let's see, let me scroll back down here. I'm sorry I scrolled up too. It is comparing these to these three pro the, the comp to these three properties and making adjustment in in different areas and then it has come up with a recommended price. And that seems reasonable. Um, this house right here, the 190, the one that sold for 193,750, was uh, somewhat. It had more square footage. Is in a different area, and it's you know you might be able to find a better comp than this one, but that's probably what's pulling the price up. But property is selling pretty well right now, and I think that that's a fairly accurate ass accurate assessment. I did a CMA not too long ago on a on a house that was similar to this, and it come it was a little bit bigger, and it come up to one eighty four nine hundred. So one seventy eight thousand four hundred seems to be pretty good. Okay, so. I can actually close this window out, and that keeps this one open, and just hit the back button. Okay, now here is where I want to upload a picture, and then I'm going to go build that CMA again. But I'm going to go to Google Earth. I'm going to basically copy the address off of... Uh, the CRS, and then I open up Google Earth, and I just paste in the new address that I just got, and I hit search. And it's coming up on Audrey Lane. Looks like Audrey Lane is at the end of a cul-de-sac. And if the Google car has been close by, which it actually, you see the blue line over here, it has stopped at the cul-de-sac. And I should still be able to get a street view of the house. I can rotate around here. And there is the house. At least I think it is. There's something too that looks a lot alike. I think that's the home. Let me go back to the MLS and, and see if that's the right home. 
looks like it's widest. on it right there it is and let's go back to google earth i believe that is the home and what i'm going to do is i'm going to save that image and i'm going to use that image in my cma and i'll just make a new folder so i know where it is and this property is 18 audrey lane You could save it anywhere you wanted to on the hard drive, but you need to know where you save it. And my real estate uh, 2 folder is on the, the desktop, and inside that is going to be the folder that I'm going to save this picture. Open it up, and then I save the picture. I'm going to call it this picture. All right, so... Now I can go back to the CMA and I'm going to upload the photo. You got the browse and I know it's on my desktop and then in the real estate 2 folder and then in the 18 Audrey Lane and there it is. And you could have cleaned this photo up with like Photoshop or something. And so there it is. It's now in the CMA. Go back to the CMA. And you see that it's in there. Right there it is. And then hit, you know, if I want to go back through and, and, and just build this CMA again, everything is still the same. I just keep hitting the next button. And the next again. And then build it. And now, now I have a picture at least to put in my CMA. And the picture was starting to get a little grainy. Sometimes you get better pictures than what this is. But for the CMA, at least there is a picture there for it. And the CMA is all done. And you could. You can print this out, or you can email it. Uh, right here is, if you use Prospect Manager, all of your prospects are listed right here. And you can send that to them really easy, or you can manually put in an email address. But uh, for me, I just like to print it sometimes. And now here's something, this is Windows 7, but with Windows 10, sometimes it doesn't want to print. It wants to print this, this part over here, but in Windows 7, it, it seems to print really well. As you can see, it's going to look pretty good. And so I'm going to print it. And I'm essentially done with this CMA. One thing I wanted to mention, when you, if you print, if sometimes you have more than three comps, maybe you have 10 or six or something like that. I like to print this view and do a price per square foot and then come up with a, a high and a low and a middle and an average. And that gives me an idea when I go out to the house whether I need to make price adjustments. You know, if it's if it's in really good shape, it's going to be on the high end. If it's in not so good shape, it's going to be towards the low. And if it's somewhere in the middle, it'll be in the one the value of the square feet that's in the middle, or it'll be towards the average. And that's all I have now for this CMA. So, I hope you enjoyed it.